Hey, what's going on, folks? Um, yeah, uh, it looks like, uh, according to the Washington Post, uh, Yahoo Sports, I believe, and Sweet Science and BoxingScene.com, um, it looks like that Floyd Mayweather has selected his next opponent. And his next opponent will be Drum roll, please. Andre Berto. That's right. Andre Berto. The former WBA, I'm sorry, WBC and IBF light, uh, 147 pound welterweight champion. The same Andre Berto who fought Luis Colazzo and got a decision, a gift decision, even though we knew that Colazzo won that fight. The same Andre Berto who got into a vicious war with Victor Ortiz and lost on a decision. And the same Andre Berto who got into a vicious war with Robert Guerrero and lost in the decision. And the same Andre Berto who got knocked out by a journeyman by host Jesus Soto Carras. Now, not discrediting Andre, discrediting Andre Berto, I actually like the guy. I actually like him as a fighter. My problem is this. What has he done since coming back from that horrendous knockout fight Soto Carras? Huh? He's had two fights. One of the fights he had, it was against uh, Chambers, I believe. Um, he didn't even make weight for the fight. But yet, he went on and he won that. He, he beat Chambers. And then, he had the next matchup against uh, Josito Lopez, which was not too long ago on PBC. Didn't look great in that fight, but he got, uh, he got the TKO victory in the fifth round. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, especially the Floyd fanboys and the fanatics, or whatnot, they're gonna come out and try to justify this. And for some, in my imaginary in my how the hell can you justify a fight like this? I really don't understand this. Um, they're gonna say, well, well, you guys, you know, guys like me, the hardcore boxing fans, or Floyd Mayweather haters, as you want to call us, yeah, whatnot. They're gonna come out and say, well, you know what? You guys have been, have been complaining about Floyd not fighting a uh, black fighter for so many years. Now he's giving a black fighter a chance to fight, um, get him a shot, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, the black fighter that he's fighting is already shot, okay? He has shot to shreds. This man has been into wars, and he's lost a decision after decision after knockout, okay? He has, and I'm looking at the rankings right now, and you will not believe what I see. Andre Berto is ranked number one by the WBA. How the hell can you rank this guy so high after two fights? After two fights since his knockout on loss to Soto Cross, you guys ranked him at number one. He's an interim champion at, at, uh, for the WBA. But yeah, he gets a shot, but not Keith Thurman. Now, Keith Thurman was an interim champion for one year, and then the WBA the BA decided to um, promote him to regular, uh, regular champion and then promote Floyd to be the super champion. All right? Now... According to our standards, that should equate a mandatory, a mandated title shot, right? A mandated fight between Thurman and Mayweather, right? But nah, we had to sit back and wait for two years now since Thurman has been his uh, been Floyd's mandatory, and he still yet hasn't gotten title shot. He's got to go fight title eliminator and fight these guys like Colazzo or fight guys like um, Leonard Bundu. But yet, don't not discrediting Colazzo and Bundu, but these are very solid fighters. But the thing is, Keith Thurman has been trying to call out these top fighters for a long time, and he can't get a fight with one of them. You know, it, it's just as amazing. You know, I'm getting off point a little bit here, but what I'm saying is this. If Floyd continues to it proclaims himself to be the best ever, why isn't he giving the top three welterweights a shot? Or the top five welterweights a shot? Name is Sean Porter, Kell Brook, Keith Thurman, Amir Khan, and Timothy Bradley. Why the hell are those guys not getting the shot? Now, let me get to get on Sean Porter for a minute here, all right? Marcos Maidana got a shot at Floyd the first fight around. He got a shot at Floyd last year, early last year, based on the fact that he beat Adrian Broner in a convincing fashion, right? He got a shot. Then, if the you know, the fanboys came out and they um, they pointed that out. They're the ones who said that, well, Maidana deserved it because of what he did to Broner. Okay. Then it's also fair to say that Sean Porter um, beat Adrian Broner in a convincing fashion, but he ain't got a shot. Now explain that. Why in the world 
does Floyd play these games, man? I, I don't get it at all. I really don't get it. Now, let's be I'm gonna be fair here. I do give him credit for the fights he, you know, for fighting some tough opponents. I get that. But he's very calculated. He's gonna fight guys at a certain place at a certain time, and he's gonna fight them on his own terms. That's what he does. And the fact of the matter is that some people are gonna say, like, well, he's earned that right. He can fight whoever he wants to fight. Okay, that's fine. Okay, no doubt about it, he can. But at the same time, we as hardcore boxing fans have the right to evaluate it, provide critical feedback, and we can condemn it. Plain and simple. And once we do condemn it or provide critical feedback with, with actual facts, you fanboys get all, you know, get all upset. You guys want to call us names, you know, call us haters and all that bullshit. Talking about, well, you mad because you ain't him, you ain't got his money and all that. Look, motherfucker, I know I ain't got his money, okay? I'm sorry for cursing, y'all. I'm just a little upset because I actually had an argument with some of my friends about this the other night. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yes, I'm you know I'm happy that Floyd got money. Okay, that's fine. I'm glad for any fighter that's got hundreds of million dollars. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard, sir, Leonard, Muhammad Ali, um, uh, Marvin Hagler. I'm happy that Oscar De La Hoya. I mean, I'm happy that those guys got money. Okay, I'm happy. Right, but the fact of the matter is this. Money can't buy this man legacy, all right? And I've told my friends about this the other, last night. Then once Floyd retires, and hopefully soon, two things are going to happen. One, his fanboys or diehard fans or his fanboys are going to go. They're not going to be around. I guarantee this is going to happen. They're not going to be in the Y2BC anymore. I guarantee that's what's going to happen. And his record, his so-called legacy will be disputed. It's going to be disputed by boxing, boxing historians because they're going to look at the level of opposition that he fought. And they're gonna look at um, the championships that the championship rounds that he's won. That's how historians rank fighters. Okay, why do you think Ali is ranked, ranked higher than um, Marciano? All right. Now back to the Andre Berto and uh, and the Mayweather uh, bout. <laughs> I, you know what? I can't be too shocked about this because we all knew this was gonna come one way or the other. It's just that it's so disappointing. That guys like Keith Thurman, who's been his mandatory for two years, can't even get a shot. Sean Porter, who's a viable, who's a, a valuable contender, can't get a shot. Amir Khan can't get a shot, and I know Amir Khan is going to be pissed about this. All right, because I can see it all over his Twitter page right now. And you know, guys like Kell Brook, the Charlo brothers, uh, Arslan Dilara, who's by the way has been his mandatory for almost more than a year now at the 154 um, division for the WBA title. Uh, Gennady Golovkin, yes, I gotta mention Golovkin, Golovkin, because he's a middleweight. But the fact of the matter is this: I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, or oh, that they've been saying is that, well, you know, first of all, Floyd's not a middleweight, okay? Golovkin is a big middleweight. Who gives a fuck, okay? Because first of all, welterweights has always fought middleweights in the past. There was never a junior middleweight class, all right. And despite that, we've had guys go from welterweight up to middleweight, like Ricardo Mayorga. All right, he moved up from 147 up to 160 to fight Felix Trinidad. Okay? So, um, look, I don't want to drag this out um, to, uh, in to an extent because I'm going to start ranting. But the thing is this. Choosing Andre Berto to justify that the fact that you have inducted black fighters is not, is not the way to go, man. I'm just being honest. I mean, we can look at this man's record. He hasn't fought a prime Winky right when he had a chance to do it. He didn't fight Paul Williams, and I don't give a fuck what Paul Williams say right now, all right? I mean, he's at a point of his life that he's going to say, you know what, the topic isn't is relevant to me anymore. I have a new life, whatnot. But the fact of the matter is this, it didn't happen at the time that Paul Williams was fighting, okay? And he vehemently called out Floyd, and Floyd didn't respond, all right? Vivian Harris, crazy ass, even one time uh, confronted Floyd at a press conference and asked him, why are you ducking me? Because I'm, you know, you're my mandatory, but you don't want to fight me. You know, this is, I mean, this is when Vivian Harris was the WBC light welterweight champion, okay? Floyd was his mandatory, and he tried to, he avoided the fight because he felt Vivian Harris was dangerous. That's a fact. Look it up, okay? He didn't fight Casa Zhu, who was the linear champion at 140. He decided to fight the weakest champion at Toro Gatti. It's a fact. And then some fans are, are coming at me talking about, oh, Zhu's the one that ducked Floyd. I was like, no, okay, all right, whatever. First of all, Floyd had plenty of time to fight this guy, but he didn't do it. All right? This was back in 2004, way before Azu took the Manhattan fight. 
All right, man, the video's over. I'm out.